Jesus, bless this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. Um, excuse me. I'm in, we're in a hotel because we're out of town. Remember that? So I'm going to go ahead and put this together for you. I still want to uh, make sure you guys get the word of God, um, everything that God is teaching us here. Okay. You know how some of you like to just slip away? You know that God brought you here. You know that. Every one of you said that, and you know it. You know it, right? And then at some point, you'll just slip sliding away. You just slip on away as if we don't exist here, right? And like, you don't belong here, right? Some of you do that. Let's go to Hebrews 10.25. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews 10.25. And you know, I have to come chasing some of you guys. Where have you been? Where is a few of you right now? I've been ding dong and knocking on your email. Where are you? Where have you been? Get back to the barn. That's my job. And I will do my job. You can do what you want to do, but I'm advising you to do what God wants you to do. Hebrews 10, 25. Well, let's start. Let's start at 23, 1023. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, without wavering. A lot of you are wavering like, like the ocean, man. You just up, down, up, down, up, down. Just here, you're there. You're here, you're there. You're gone, you're here. You're gone, you're here. You're gone. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? For he who promised is faithful. The one that we're serving, Jesus Christ, is very faithful to you. Please be faithful to him in return. You bouncing around, you're not faithful, okay? And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Do I teach good works here? Absolutely I do. So does Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, he's going to judge you on your works. Those works has to be Jesus Christ. Okay. Let us consider one another means... If we're not together, we can't consider one another, right? So are we supposed to try to walk this walk without being in the church that he put us in? Are we supposed to do this on our own, at home, by ourselves? No, no. And I tell you, those of you who do it, I'm like, you're not in, you get back in God's will. And you're like, I am, I've never left God's will. I'm like, you left it. You're out of it right now. If you're not in this barn where he puts you and you're not coming to fellowship and studies with us, you're not in his will. You're in your will, your own will. God's not confused, y'all, as to what church he puts you in. He, you are. He's not confused. You are. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. You're supposed to be here stirring up love and good works. Amen. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, okay, let's keep going. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Not forsaking. He means don't not come together with the church. Come together with the church. He commands you to. Not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together as is the manner of some. And there's some that's the manner of. I've been ding-donging on your, on your email box. Saying, come back, come back, get back in the barn. Get back in the barn. You don't think you're doing nothing wrong, but Jesus Christ is telling you, you are. Don't run from God and where God has put you. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching, what day? The, the end of time, these days today, the return of Jesus Christ. Did you see that approaching? Get together with the body even more. You need it, and they need it. You understand? And then Jesus ain't playing with you people. He puts you in the church, and he wants you in that church. This one, particularly, if you're listening to me, because he was very clear that you don't know his word. Think you do, but you don't know his word. There's an ocean full of people he showed me, and every one of you that listened to me is was in that ocean. Every one of you. Okay? He's pulling some of you. He's giving you a chance to get out of that ocean. That ocean was going to hell. And these were people that thought they were Christians, swarping down. Luke 13 started 22, and he showed it to me. Okay? But I'll tell you, you can have confidence 
that you'll go to heaven. You can have confidence in your relationship with Jesus Christ if you do things his way, never yours, his way all the time. Your way will always take you straight to hell. Okay, I'm um, going to take you over to Proverbs now. Go back to Proverbs. Some of you are uh, really being uh, very stubborn, very stubborn to me, to God. And you don't think you're being stubborn to God when you be stubborn to me, but you are. Because Jesus Christ picked me to teach you. He picked you to come to this church. He did that. He did this whole thing. Some of you just playing games with him. Some of you think you still worship him. You're not worshiping him. Worship him when you actually follow him. Okay? So you got to learn to be accountable. Uh, go to Proverbs 18. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. Those of you that's isolating yourself from the church, uh, God said you seek your own desire. You don't care what God wants. You want what you want. Your own desire. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. How many of you that I come calling you back to the barn, sheep, get mad in attitudes with me? How many of you? It says right there that you rage against all wise judgment. That's what some of you are doing. Okay, and the Lord sees it too. Okay. Men and women, you guys who isolate themselves from the body of Christ, they're cutting off yourself off from the checks and balances that God has uh, put into place for our safety. That's what you're doing. Cutting yourself off from the safety measures that God has put in place for you. You're trying to run your own life, do your own thing, whatever. It's all about what you say and you want and you end up messing everything up. Everything's you wonder why hell's coming at your door. Why is your family falling apart? Why is your life falling apart? Why is your finances falling straight to the pit of hell? Because you caused it. Mm -hmm. You caused it by not following the one who who uh, had his safety arms around you by pushing him away and pushing away. See, God works through people. He has churches he puts here on this earth. Not all churches out there belong to him. Some he puts here like this one, like me. Okay. And he wants you here to learn from me because inside of me is Jesus teaching you. And he wants you to learn from him. When you isolate yourself from other believers, you know what you're doing? You're setting yourself up for failure. That's what you're doing. You're setting yourself up for failure every time you isolate yourself from other believers. One of the great restorative works God is doing in our time is placing renewed emphasis on openness, accountability, and integrity. And, and he wants you to follow that. Amen? Yes, yes. So the reason for success of the church fellowships, Google Meets, uh, get-togethers. We provide opportunities for people to walk in his light with one another because we're all made in God's image. You understand? I'm in God's image. You're in God's image. And God will not run away from his own image, y'all. When you bring all the, he said, where two or three are gathered in my name. Jesus said, where two or three people in my image are gathered in my name. I'm in the middle of them. I'm in the midst. So the more people that gather together to come and hear the, you know, talk about the Lord and worship the Lord and fellowship and learn. Uh, Jesus is all up in the middle of that. But you're trying to go off by yourself and trying to do things your way. You're already out of his will because he just told you, don't do that. He just told it to you. Those of you that don't believe it, 
Our enemy, as I told you last week, the devil, he goes around like a roaring lion looking for someone who's laying down their shield. Someone who's weak. Who's, who's in defiance. Someone who's walking and pushing the church away and getting mad at the church and the mad at the one that God is using to help you. He's looking for you. The devil's looking for you because you open access, man, easy access for him to come in and eat you up. When people isolate themselves like that, he finds you. The devil does. He sees you. You invite him in, actually. That's what you do. You invite him in, and then he comes in, and he kills, steals, and destroys all your hope, your joy, everything you got. So there's a reason God said, don't, uh, do not do not not assemble yourselves together. Do assemble yourselves together is what he's saying to you. 18.1, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. It's whatever you want. You're your God. He rages against all wise judgment. Wise judgment coming from me is telling you, get back to the barn, come back in fellowship, get back in line and order with God and start obeying God because you love him. And, and you will rage against that judgment. Okay. A fool, verse two, has no delight in understanding. A fool doesn't want to understand anything about God or what God says or what God wants. That's a fool. But in expressing his own heart, you don't care about what God wants. You're going to do what you want to do. It's all about you. That's a fool right there. God says so. When the wicked comes, content comes also. Contempt, that means disregard. When you start settling wicked into your heart, you don't care. That God said, don't, you know, not forsake to send yourselves together. You don't care about that. You don't care if I'm doing my job that God gave me to come and get you. You don't care about that. Disregard it as if it doesn't matter, right? The wicked, when the wicked come, that means the wicked's there. Not Jesus. The wicked is in you. There. When the wicked comes, content comes also. Content means disregard. And with dishonor comes reproach. Reproach means disappointment. When you start dishonoring God and what he's trying to do for you, he's disappointed in you. You bring God disappointment. Okay? Reproach. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. That means you can talk so much that you sink. You can sink yourself with your own mouth. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. To speak uh, inspirational things or things that will help people or even yourself, it continues to flow and flow and flow. But people that are ignorant, um, they sink straight to the bottom. Worthless. What they say, the words are worthless. Okay? It is not good to show partiality to the wicked or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Don't try to overthrow me, y'all, for coming and doing what Jesus Christ ordained me to do for you. It's for your better good. Never, Nothing here ever hurts you. Nothing ever hurts you here. It's all to help you. It's all for your better good, and you know that. So this is what's called righteous here. Don't try to overthrow righteousness in judgment, okay? A fool's lips... Enter into contention, getting arguments, gets in trouble every time, your own mouth. And his mouth calls for blows. You may, it may even get you in some uh, physical confrontations, your mouth. Amen. A fool's mouth is his own destruction. See? And his lips are a snare of his soul. Your soul is going to live forever. Do you understand that? And being this kind of a wicked individual snares you all the way to hell forever. Okay? The words of a talebearer are like tasty truffles. And they go down into the innermost body. He who is slothful in his... Go back to it. The words of a talebearer 
are like tasty trifles. People telling stories and doing a lot of talking, gossiping, let's put it that way. And they go down into the innermost body, to the innermost of the body. He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. I told you, you were created to work. Adam was created to work. And in heaven, those of us that make it are going to be working for eternity. Eternity. But that work turned into labor, hardcore labor, when sin came about. We won't be doing hardcore labor in heaven for eternity. Work, yes. Labor, no. He who is slothful, lazy in his work. And I'll tell you something. Those of you who get mad at me for coming to find where are you? I'm not lazy in my work, y'all. The Lord gave me. I am far cry from lazy. And I will never let you or anybody else stop me from doing what God has me here to do. And to come and find you, that's my job. You can deny or you can come back whatever you want to do. I hope you follow the Lord. But that's your choice. But I will, I will do my job to the death. Okay? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and we are safe. Why would you want to run from the Lord and from this wisdom that he gives you here? He gives you wisdom here like you have never seen. You have never, ever seen wisdom like God gives you right here in this ministry. And I know that's a fact. You know why? Because Jesus teaches you here. The wisdom comes from the throne room and is straight out of his word. And you know that. And he showed you things you ain't never heard anybody say. You never got no wisdom like you get here. And it's all thanks and glory to Jesus. Okay. And a righteous man will run to it, not away from it. Run to it and is safe there. Amen. A rich man's wealth is his strong city. And like a high wall in his own esteem. Money is a God to many of you people out there. You rob the church. You rob the right church. You understand the one you're supposed to help, right? Uh, you help the wrong ones, the ones that don't even teach you the word of God because you, you want them to see you because you're there in person, right? You feel like you owe them something, right? It's your own esteem. Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. And before honor is humility. You got to be broken down. To really appreciate Jesus Christ. You don't want to be stuck up and prissy and prancy and all that stuff like that. Before destruction, your heart is that way. It's very stuck up on yourself and everything else. But to honor the Lord, you'll be broken down to humility. You'll become humble and you'll be one, glad to serve the Lord, y'all. He who answers a matter before he hears it is folly and shame to him listening skills y'all listening skills please improve them listen right now okay the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness but who can bear a broken spirit a lot of people a lot of medical doctors y'all believe that people who want to die when they're sick die uh people that don't want to die some of them don't die because that willpower is so strong, so strong. Your willpower, y'all, is, is really strong. Even though a person's willpower doesn't cause a person to be sick or to be healthy, um, it can often be a very important factor, right, into uh, your health, your own willpower. Same thing with your growth in Jesus Christ. If you got no willpower, no oomph. To even get close to Jesus, then you won't grow. If you don't have no off to even go where he puts you, when you know this is where he puts you, you know that, you guys. I'm telling you, if you're here listening to me, he put you here. He did that. He put this together. This ain't no average YouTube channel. This is Jesus Christ saw you in that ocean full of people. And many of you keep swimming back to that ocean. You swimming back on your own. Do you understand what you're doing? I don't think you do. 
life, including myself, is filled with a lot of people that's been at death's door, y'all. God will allow you keep running from God and he will allow things to happen to you where you're going to have to get on your knees to Jesus Christ and, and start following his will. He can bring you so low like he did me to where you are just dragging on his tailcoat trying to follow him. You will not run from him anymore. But it's some painful stuff, man. Some painful stuff that he will allow you to go through when you're running from him. He could be taking your kids home, your favorite pet, your parents, your siblings, your spouses, maybe all of them, anything, whatever it takes to get you to submit to him and quit submitting to yourself. And then when you do, he increases your will. He helps you. He helps you. Kick your willpower in another notch and you will start fighting to make it and you'll make it. And then you'll start helping other people like I am. You'll start helping other people to make it. That's your job. It's definitely my job. And I'm anointed to do so. And that I will do. But I'm watching some of you out there running away like little cockroaches, man. Just running into the dark little crevices. Darkness. God has a word for you. He says, get yourself together. We are going into the last of the last minutes. Stop running. Pull yourself together. And get back on fire for me. That's what the Lord says to you. Get yourself back in church, y'all. Come back to the barn, those of you that's running away. And get in the house of God. And get in the word of God with us. And let the Lord teach you. He's teaching you things that he knows you need. You may not think you know, but you don't know what God knows. You don't even know yourself the way God knows you. He knows what you need. That's why he brought you here. All right. You make your own decisions, but you are accountable to the church. The one God put you in. Amen. You're accountable to your shepherd, to your pastor, which is me. Yeah. And he chose that. Who? Jesus did. All right, so I'm here to tell you, I'm going to shepherd over you whether you want it or not. Get yourself together like the Lord said. Get back in church, you guys. Get back into following the Lord's ways and quit following yours. Yours will always lead you to hell. Every time. There's a lot of people in the church, y'all, going to hell. Whole lot of them. But in this church right here, some of you that have come here, that God's brought here, and you are really giving it all you have to study and fellowship and become part of this church and help this church and help the people, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. And Jesus Christ put me here to help you make it. And you know what I am? I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. Y'all know me by now. You know, I'm a fighter and I'm fighting for my own soul every single day. And I'm fighting for yours every single day, but you got to do some fighting too. Okay, and then we'll make it. God bless you guys. I will see you guys Friday night in the barn. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You go to JesusDoers.com and get through the barn. Have all your parables ready. The video I put out yesterday for all your parables homework. Have them ready Friday night. And then I'll see you Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have movie night this Saturday night, y'all. And we are watching Before the Wrath. And you guys do not want to miss that. You really don't. You don't understand nothing about the return of Jesus Christ, nor about communion until you watch before the wrath. Then you'll be like, wow, it puts a whole new spin on the coming of Jesus Christ and your communion that we're supposed to do. It puts a whole new spin on it, a deeper spin. Let's put it that way. Same spin, but a deeper spin. And you don't want to miss it, y'all. At all. Jesus knew what he was doing in that upper room. So did the disciples. We're going to show it to you Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay? Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we have Rhonda at 4 on Sunday. Okay? Be in the barn. You go to JesusDoers.com and come in through the Red Barn. Juniors, Saturday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Your barn link is also on JesusDoers.com. 6 p.m. Um, everybody else, make sure you're going to that website every day through at different times. Cause we are constantly, uh, my husband and Shanoa are constantly 
slamming stuff up there. What's going on in this war that's heading your way? This war ain't going nowhere. It's going to drag out, y'all. And I told you this until everybody flips on Israel. And that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Okay. So um, it's not going anywhere. So you want the latest updates from Israel. We have inside people. You know that I went to Israel last year and you know I'm in, well, our tour guide comes and helps us. So we got key people right there inside of Israel. So you get accurate news. So we are pumping it up for you every day. Not, not junk you hear on CNN or Fox or whatever, whatever. It's all politics. They change things and lies. No lies here. Okay. Thank those of you that helped Avi and his family get out of uh, Israel. Thank you for everybody jumped in for four airplane tickets pretty fast. That was that it was it fast. Thank you guys for helping with that so much. Okay, now let's get back on to the church. Let's get back on and help this church grow because we are going into the Ezekiel 38 war, World War III, and we have to get the word out to the people. And God trusts you to help this church grow so we can get the word out. You're a part of that. Okay, quit running. And start coming and learning and help this church. In Jesus' name, God says so. God bless you. Give your life to Jesus. Anything you need, y'all, is in the description on the video. God bless you.